This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Welcome back to the first research talks here on Stockbox with Alan Green, the first one of 2024. Alan, welcome back. Happy New Year to you. And a happy New Year to you too, Mark. And uh, I hope everyone had a good Christmas and festive break. Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, for me, it was quite uh, it was quite a quick quick trip. Arrived in the UK on the 24th of or December and came back on the 2nd of January. So it was a pretty swift one. Um, but, uh, you know, it was still nice to get away from the screens pretty quiet yeah. over that course of period, uh, Christmas period. No surprise, RNS is coming out in those few days um, between Christmas and New Year, which was nice. Um, but yes, back onto it now. And I'm actually quite excited. Maybe it's just a New Year, fresh kind of start, or you know, the, the fact that the days are getting longer. I always feel better when we've passed that point, when the days start to get longer. And you already can feel that uh, it's getting darker. Just sl- ever so slightly later. You know, in the evenings now, the lights are going on just that tiny bit later. So whether it's that or whether it's just the, the general positive feeling, but I do have um, good feelings for this year. It's an election year. Um, last year was pretty dire on the markets, and um, I'm, I'm quite hopeful for a pretty pretty decent year. I don't know how you're feeling about that, Alan. Uh, yeah, I have to say, I think um, cautiously optimistic is 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 the is the phrase I'd probably use at the moment, but. Uh, the one good thing is I am sitting in my office here at the front of the house, and uh, it's not raining. Yeah, I'm looking out, uh, and I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually seeing a watery sun and a few clouds. Uh, but uh, I think the weather is set to improve for the next uh, four, four to five days. So if we have no rain and um, the roads dry up, then fantastic. You know, it's uh, it, it's certainly positive. But but certainly on the market front, um, I think we've got a lot of factors in place. We've got falling inflation. We've got uh, um, potential falls in interest rates. I think the Halifax has already said that it's, it's dropping uh, uh, rates for uh, borrowers, uh, which is which is uh, great. Um, and of course, that will feed through to the, the rest of the market. Once the market leader does it, that tends to follow on. And yes, as you rightly said, you know, Rishi has indicated there will be an election um, in the second half of the year. Um, and of course, uh, Keir Starmer was already bleating that. Uh, well, why doesn't he do it earlier? He's, it sounds like he's squatting at number 10, but, um, you know, I think uh, it's all rhetoric at the moment, and I'm sure once we get nearer the time, we'll get some cast iron uh, facts that we can make our judgments on. But certainly for the markets, um, I am optimistic. Um, we've seen a reasonably good start so far, and also some of the shares we spoke about uh, in our New Year tips, they're moving in the right direction. There's, there's been a substantial move up in Anglesey Mining since uh, we uh, we spoke about it, and. Uh, I record an interview with uh, Director Joe Badassel looking forward to 2024, and that's certainly uh, certainly seems to have caught the imagination of the markets as, as we as we speak. But of course, today we're looking at um, uh, an exclusive uh, a, a, an exclusive uh, set of uh, acquisitions stocks, um, um, and these are focused really at the technology end, with two in particular focused on crypto and Bitcoin, which of course is very much back in the headlines again for all the right reasons. Indeed, yes, indeed. Um, so, I mean, we're going to be covering, yes, Coincilium, who we've spoken about, well, not for a while, actually, now. Um, of course, they're very much in the crypto and tech space. I'm always uh, on the latest sort of innovation that's going on in that sector. So let's see what uh, the latest is with them. And, of course, as well, BTC or Binance, PLC, who were uh, really a play on, on Bitcoin there um, with the upcoming halving this year. Indeed, and then Aura Carbon as well as the tech, as a tech play whose app launched only just a few days ago, I think, to the general public. It did, and I have actually downloaded the app, and it's it, and very good. It, it is indeed. So, mm. um, but yeah, let, let, let's start with let's start with the two crypto uh, focused companies first. Mark uh, uh, Coincilium, of course, we have spoken about uh, on many occasions in the past, and um, I, I think uh, you know everyone knows Coincilium uh, and its history it was the first ever blockchain IPO on Aquis in 2015, um, was initially uh, an investor into Bitcoin ventures, um, and, uh, or in, in, into blockchain ventures rather, um, and a seed investor into the same. 
but it's very much shifted its focus uh, in recent years. And of course, we've seen, we saw that incredible uh, uh, explosion in the share price, which was driven by the valuation of Bitcoin, took the share price, I think, up to 30p at one stage, and investors all over the world were getting very excited by it. Um, and uh, the shares have come back down and been drifting along really at about um, about a penny and really have burst back into life uh, really since um, since the, the the end of December um, going into going to um, uh, the first week in January, which of course we're, we're at the end of now. Um, and the reason for that is it, it's a there's a bit of a corporate reset with the company. So um, there's the, the new market that's evolving now. We're, we're hearing about the metaverse. We're hearing about um, we're hearing about new ventures in the in the Web three sector, and this is where this is where coin ceiling is, is focused. So it's um, it's very much um, looking at uh, uh, it, uh, it, it's very much looking at a portfolio of assets and engage with the portfolio of assets uh, where the convergence of blockchain. AI, artificial intelligence, and the metaverse are slowly meshing together to create um, to create this new web web three decentralized environment. Um, and this is this is going to really set the framework for how we transact and and uh, and uh, interact with uh, with ourselves in a virtual world going forward. So, um, Coincilium has a portfolio of investments and clients and i'm just going to sort of go through each one to outline the opportunity but um but i think with the reset and certainly with the with the announcement uh of the um of the uh unveiling of the byzant byzant web3 social network ecosystem in december and the chairman's statement from the agm um there's very much a reset and i look forward now to um, to the the uh, the potential sort of for the uh, the company in 2024, um, we're seeing this resurgence, of course, in Bitcoin and ETH and Ethereum up 148 percent Bitcoin and Ethereum up 88 uh, percent over the past year. We have the prospect for the launch of um, uh, uh, funds uh, ETFs, uh, both through BlackRock, Vanek, and and other institutions in the first half of the year. And that's very much going to uh, validate uh, Bitcoin and crypto as an investment for the mainstream. You know, it, it's rather rather than be this, uh, this crypto on the side where you can go and have a punt. It's really rationalizing and validating the whole concept um, as a serious investment strategy. And when BlackRock get involved, you can be damn sure they'd have, they'll, they'll have done their due diligence and research in, and and you know, have a a full and deep understanding of the markets and the risks involved. Um, and of course, the 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 uh, the, the uh, transition for Coincilium is is part of this. So um, the the company has um, uh, numerous investments, and I'm going to go through each of those now. So um, it's invested into uh, the lifestyle apparel company Black Paris. Black, of course, uh, um, where the A is replaced with a V. Um, uh, the All Black uh, is it, a lifestyle apparel company which offers accessories and digital goods. Um, uh, the All Black range, where you've got a range of All Black uh, clothing, and then of course the um, the company launched the Black Genesis avatar collection uh, in the middle of last year, and that's NFTs, uh, which dropped in two thousand and twenty one. That, that that's in June two thousand twenty one, um, and that's evolved and grown since then. Then we have GGS uh, IO, which is um, it, it, it's a, it, uh, is it, it's a company engaged in the transition from Web two to Web Web three in the gaming sector. And what this what GGS does, it allows gamers to earn money while playing their favorite games, um, connecting the world's best Web two players with with Web three gaming opportunities. So you know, I said at the start, the meshing uh, together. Of the um, of blockchain AI and the metaverse, and this is where these opportunities are now emerging from. Then, of course, um, uh, in, uh, listeners will probably remember Green Gauge, uh, the digital finance pioneer, where where um, where uh, uh, Coincilium is, is is engaged. Um, it's a digital finance pioneer that provides a platform of relationship based e money accounts to SMEs, high net worths, and digital asset companies. And it also offers a B2B 
lending platform offering digital money sources. So rather than sort of borrow uh, uh, finance in the conventional form, you can borrow using digital and, and cryptocurrency. Then we have um, Silter, which um, this is the company that harnesses AI to revolutionize feasibility studies and financing for green projects around the world. Um, so if there's a if there's an opportunity to develop um, uh, a, a, a project, a green project, um, a resource project uh, in a particular country, what it does, it uses AI to crunch through all the data um, and the and the the pros and cons, uh, which saves huge amount of money, huge amount of time and money, and uh, frees up the developers so they can focus on the the imperatives that can drive change. So it's um it, it, that's uh, that, that's going to be a key part, I think, of of um, all of our lives going forward as projects are developed. The application of AI to crunching the numbers and and uh, and harnessing just harnessing the power of ai to 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 resolve issues and uh, come up with solutions faster than they would have done previously the uh, coincidence also invested in a, a company called yellow which is building the next generation defi experience this is very much in the finance and the trading marketplace uh, the next defi next gen defi experience for exchanges brokers and traders uh, with its layer 3 peer to peer network um, which solves uh, issues like liquidity fragmentation and offers um, a, a decentralized trading infrastructure. Um, and also it offers a, a system called ClearSync, which reduces counterparty risks and helps to settle trades uh, quickly and efficiently using ETH, Ethereum uh, smart contracts. And of course, we've heard a lot about Ethereum con smart contracts uh, through, our, through other entities. So this is just uh, making that process of trading more efficient and seamless, and I think this is always this is always the you always see these quantum leaps and big steps when um, new markets come together and they're fragmented and gradually they're tied together. So you have a single point of entry where you can go to execute the trade, uh, and whether you're trading in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or with some other digital entity, um, that transaction is quick and seamless. Coincidence is also investing into Unilayer, which is a, an inter interoperability platform and um, and blockchain uh, that facilitates transfer of data and assets across all blockchains. Chain Logic smart contracts is the is the uh, the, the the backbone or logics as Unilayer call it. Um, and then uh, a series of other investments um, into uh, Meta yachts. So so I, I'm I'm trying to. I'm trying to imagine this, but um, it's uh, it, these are luxury 3D yachts in the metaverse, um, and there are eight fully functional 3D yachts in this metaverse. Then we have uh, um, th then we have Vertical, which is uh, the tallest metaverse in the world. Which um, it's a place to celebrate digital art and culture. It floats 555 feet above New York Central Park, stands 1.6 miles high, and it's got exclusive. Metaverse spaces for blue chip NFT collections, which sounds absolutely fascinating. Um, we then come to Carbons, which is um, a, a French simplified stock company which provides um, digital carbon credit marketplace. Now, um, I, I'm guessing this is similar to Aura Technologies, which I'll come on to in a second. But um, uh, Carbons uh, offers carbon credit management and procurement, real time carbon accounting for companies. So, so again, another another system based around Web3. And then um, a name that will be familiar to Coincidental Investors, Endorse, which of course is the Web3 development company, building a suite of tools and applications for blockchain protocols um, and Web3 developers to pull all of these uh, um, elements together. So um, in, in summary, Coincidental, the company, the entity as it is today, um, has a suite of assets and investments that address every element of the new Web3 protocols um, and the metaverse, and of course, uh, harnessing the technology um, of AI to, to, to really implement and drive this forward. Now, of course, underneath all this is the valuation of blockchain. And we've seen, as we know, a big jump in the value of blockchain um, uh, uh, this year, and also, uh, 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 not blockchain, Bitcoin rather this year, and also um, uh, Ethereum as well. Um, and that has in turn pulled along other cryptocurrencies uh, with that. 
So if we look at the uh, the valuation of the company, we've seen, as I say, a big increase in the in the share price uh, since uh, since the um, end of December. But um, even as we sit here now, with that raft of investments that's owned by Cook Coin Selling, the company is still just worth four point six million, uh, which is a derisory amount considering the a the potential the company has, and b it also has that o- US OTC listing as well. So. Um, I think uh, this is one of the companies that re- that's really going to benefit from the increase in Bitcoin. And of course, Mark, we've uh, we're going to see this halving coming up um, in a few months, which is going to which is going to further drive um, uh, the, uh, the the marketplace. And uh, I think there are estimates in some quarters that with Bitcoin we could see a price of uh, in excess of a hundred thousand dollars a coin, which uh, is quite staggering considering where the starting point was. Well, that's certainly what a lot of people are saying, isn't it? $100,000. And I mean, um, every single time the halving has happened, the price has indeed gone up and found a new sort of base level. So I mean, uh, you know, it's not always guaranteed, but the best way to look at what's to come is to have perhaps look at what has happened in the past. And yes, of course, that halving is coming up. I mean, it's like anything though, isn't it? When it gets more scarcer, supply and demand, in theory, the price should go up, it becomes harder to find harder to extract. Mm. In the case of Bitcoin, harder to um, to create. Um, so yeah, I mean that's a, a big poignant moment for the crypto market. And given if there's a bit more risk on this year, then yeah, we could see a bit more excitement and liquidity generally in that space. I like to use the Bitcoin price to get a kind of get a gauge as to whether we're risk on or risk off in the, in this market. I think it's actually quite a good uh, a good sign. And of course, it's been doing quite well recently, which clearly means that there is some risk money coming back into the market uh, uh, which is generally good for everyone who's who's invested in this space but, yeah, very much so but i think um i think to allude to our points at the start of uh, uh, the podcast mark uh, when you look at interest rates uh, when you look at um uh, uh lending uh, lending rates and and also inflation as well you, you put those two together um there is we, we're seeing a top out now we're seeing, seeing possibly the start of a move downwards and the the appetite for risk will grow exponentially the further that those the interest rates and of course inflation fall. So um, yeah, I, I think all the factors are in place to to really start to see uh, a serious reset in valuation terms for stocks engaged with the cryptocurrency marketplace. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And while we're talking about the Bitcoin price and that play on Bitcoin, Binance PLC, then of course company doing very well recently um, since coming to market there. But um, David Lenegas really just pushing on, wants as many miners spinning as possible really before that halving is what he's told me a number of times. Indeed, uh, I, I saw the interview and mm. uh, and uh, have also looked closely at, at Binance and, and uh, what, a, what a great epic code, by the way, BGC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if, uh, yeah I, it's, uh, that, 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 was, that was a real, a real coup uh, securing that. But of course, as you say, um, you know David uh, David uh, Lenegas and his team and Jeremy Edelman, they're building a a fully fledged Bitcoin mining uh, company, focusing on installing clusters of these Bitcoin miners across facilities through third party crypto miners, and these are focused primarily in Labrador, in Canada, where of course power is cheap and uh, the uh, the current. Uh, the, the the current cost for operating um for operating uh these um these bitcoin mines or keeping them spinning is approximately six cents per kilowatt hour um as we know in december the company announced it completed the acquisition of 170 bitcoin miners so just um they're just now on 290 miners um and david is operating uh, looking to increase that to 400 miners uh spinning in the northern usa as soon as possible, and of course, that generates uh, something like eighteen p- petahash. That's p- uh, processing power, which means a bitcoin every uh, every ten days currently. But if he can, if, um, if the company can increase that to uh, in excess of four hundred miners, then um, we could be looking at a point where they're generating bitcoin every day, even taking into account the forthcoming halving, which is very exciting indeed. You know, when you consider that um, Bitcoin could be on a price run and we could be looking at, you know, something like $100,000 per Bitcoin um, going forward. Um, so the, the the strategy behind uh, uh, Venance is, is quite simple. It's um, 
The initial focus is on scaling up Bitcoin mining, which, of course, the company is doing. Um, uh, but David has said they will also look at other cryptocurrencies and operations in the DeFi and big data space. So uh, I think um, I, I, I think the strategy is pretty clear. You know, once you've secured these Bitcoin miners, generating Bitcoin, adding to the value, um, this company has no debt. And I think this is really important because, of course, other companies in the sector, they've gone through the first iteration of the the Bitcoin growth growth story. And then, of course, there was a sharp reset um, and companies had grown, but they would uh, they had taken on uh, overheads. And, of course, through that, acquired debt. And I think I'm, I'm talking about sort of Argo blockchain here, of course. That's um, that's really the best example of, of, of a company that, uh, that uh, really enjoyed great success through the first iteration of the Bitcoin drive. Um, so, so what uh, Vinance have done, they come to the market, they're very much, um, you know, the, uh, the secondary phase of, of, of the drive in Bitcoin. So they're offering to UK investors an opportunity to uh, participate. If you like, it's a, it's a bit of a proxy for Bitcoin. So you can invest directly in, into Vinance. Um, you, you have direct exposure to Bitcoin. And the faster David and his team can ramp up the production of Bitcoin, the more the share price will rise. So you'll see an exponential growth in the share price potentially to mirror Bitcoin. And that to me is a really simple binary uh, investment proposition. And um, I think it's one that uh, as David and his team progress, we're going to see we're going to see more investors get engaged with. Already, if we look at the share price, the, the share price since the IPO. Bumped along at about 2.7p. Then, of course, the, the doubling was announced that in November. And since then, it's been top right-hand corner stuff all the way as, as far as the charts are concerned. You know, we've now quadrupled in value, eight and a half pence a share, giving the company a market cap of just under 9.9 million. But when you consider Argo blockchain, its peak was valued in excess of one point uh, one and a half billion. It gives you some idea of the potential scope still to uh to, to that, that could still be fulfilled here so um so looking forward um if the uh if if uh, david and his team can scale up the, the current production for bitcoin uh or the current the, the, the current uh, um uh mechanics and dynamics that drive production alone leads to about 900 bitcoin uh being available for production per day of course that will halve the 450 so um, improving efficiencies of production to getting Bitcoin a day will add a tremendous amount of um, nascent value to, uh, to 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 Bitcoin as an entity. And of course, as I mentioned with uh, Coincillium, that's why the big institutions are getting involved now. Um, uh, so uh, ultimately, I think Dave and his team want to see a hundred uh, or a thousand machines operating, um, and at that juncture, they will be able to produce uh, one Bitcoin per day. Um, also, I like the fact that uh, Vanans also have an OTCQB listing, um, which is a precursor to securing its DTC in the US, which um, is the equivalent to uh, it's the US equivalent to Crest. In other words, um, you have online RSPs which quote your stock electronically, so it just makes trading the stock easier, and of course gives you exposure to that all important US market, which of course is where Vanans uh, operations are are, are, are based. Um, in terms of fixed costs, I mean, uh, Vinance have no debt, but also they have visibility on costs going forward. They have a three-year fixed price contract with Block Labs in Labrador. Um, and the more miners they can bring on stream, the more their cost per, uh, per, per uh, or the, the uh, cost per kilowatt hour will fall, uh, potentially down to, it's currently six, uh, six cents per kilowatt hour. Um, if they can bring a thousand miners uh, on stream, we could be looking at about two, two to two and a half cents uh, per kilowatt hour, which is which is which is exponential growth by any stretch of the imagination, particularly when the remaining um, overheads are so low. So I, I think this is the ideal opportunity. So investors looking to get inv involved with Bitcoin, this is a great proxy for that, and one that I think will match Bitcoin um, uh, every step of the way in terms of price increase. But also, if there are any dips in the Bitcoin price whilst it's rising, if the Vinance team are scaling up the number of machines spinning, then it should that, that should actually 
that that may uh, just see a, a, a clean growth curve rather than matching the dips that we might see with, with Bitcoin on the way up. So, yeah, looking very good for 2024. Indeed, yeah. Well, indeed, let's see, as I say, like, what, um, how David manages to get all those miners spinning up as uh, as he as he promises. Um, and, yeah, at the moment, you say that Bitcoin every sort of seven to ten days, was it something like that? Well, that's obviously going to increase. You yeah. Know, heck yeah, well, a lot, it, isn't it? Well, 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 the aim is to, is to get it. Uh, I think if they can get a thousand miners uh, mm. spinning out there, then the, that that's the equivalent of even with the halving, uh, that's going to be the equivalent of of one bitcoin per day. So if one you, a day. That's what his target yeah. is, isn't it? Yeah, which would yeah, be yeah. The, the, phenomenal, the, really. And I think once he hits that, but 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 it's also, you know, it, it it's also the, the 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 fall in in cost per kilowatt hour too. That's going to be hugely significant. You've got a three-year fixed contract with blocks with block labs and a scalable contract. So the more miners you have spinning, the less your the less your your uh, your your power costs are. So it that to me is is a bit of a no-brainer. Yeah, indeed, indeed, yeah. Okay, excellent. So Aura Carbon then, Alan, app launched a few days ago. Well, they have, and again, uh, you know, Aura Aura Technologies um, is also uh, this is also um, a, a, an acquisition stock. Um, the company's had a really good run in the share price over the past year. You know, we're looking this time last year, shares were 3.8p. We're now looking at 11p um, and uh, giving the company a market cap of 22.7 million, you know, which um, which actually is is pretty good considering, you know, the, the company have now just launched the app. But um, the carbon credit marketplace uh, is a huge marketplace. Uh, it, it, you know, th that's that's always uh, that's that's never been in doubt. But um, historically, it's been very uh, disparate. It's been very fragmented. Um, and up till now, nothing has really existed that pulls it all together into one place. So what Aura Technologies have done, um, they, have, uh, they have created um, a digital carbon platform, a, a trading app, um, where you can buy, sell, and retire carbon credits uh, in, the, in the voluntary carbon, mar carbon market. And the voluntary car market or VCM is is used by public and private um, uh, 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 and private uh, sectors to to work towards uh, creating a carbon neutral and net zero uh, climate uh, 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 net zero goals for um, uh, for for their their manufacturing and production. So if you're a if you're a factory and you have a dirty manufacturing process, uh, then of course you could you could go through. The Aura Carbon app and invest into green technology um, to create your carbon credits, which will offset your output. So, as an entity, you become carbon neutral or carbon positive, depending on. So, as I say, uh, Aura's platform simplifies uh, th this uh, this this uh, complex and disparate industry uh, into in, into a simple and, and intuitive user experience. And indeed, I this morning downloaded the app uh, the aura carbon app um i'm also invested in the company too so i should declare my interest here uh and i downloaded uh, the app um and uh, it's very simple it's very intuitive and i think um what i what i'm pleased with or, or particularly pleased about is that a lot of companies that launch apps um they're under tremendous investor pressure to get it out into the marketplace and what aura haven't done is caved in and uh, and launched a version of the app which is full of holes um the app is very good it's very intuitive it's very very stable um and uh, and they've created something which is very simple to use easy to understand but um it's something i think will revolutionize the industry for, from here on in and uh, indeed as uh, the chairman mike edwards said so um you know it's uh, what it's done is democratized access to this complex marketplace um, and it it actually marks a pivotal shift in the industry too, and also society as well. There is is a pivotal shift in how towards how society contributes to environmental sustainability going forward. Um, and uh, you know that, that this is I I, I think uh, I think the the share price has reflected the fact that there are knowledgeable investors out there that see the opportunities here. But really, we're still scratching the surface here. Once the app is up and up and running and uh, all of the reviews uh, take place across uh, through uh, uh, with users across the world and industry users, and uh, people see how easy and intuitive this app is. 
it's going to revolutionise the industry. And I think um, Aura Carbon are set for uh, set, set for a, a, a really strong couple of years. Um, just a note on Mike Edwards, of course. Mike's uh, got a track record in this uh, regard. He was the co-founder of Guild Esports, um, also co-founder of Cellular Goods Cannabinoid uh, Company, co-founder of NFT Investments, um, and also mentioned Argo Blockchain just now. Mike was the co-founder of Argo Blockchain. So, so you know, he's um, this guy understands the technology inside out. And the fact that he's uh, moved into this sector I think uh, is highly significant because the he sees a sector that uh, was worth billions of dollars uh, uh, and is worth billions of dollars, but um, really uh, hasn't been uh, hasn't been pulled together as a single entity. And of course, with blockchain and other technologies and and artificial intelligence, the technology is now that now there to do that to make it easy for companies and individuals mm. to invest into these opportunities. So, so yeah, it, you know, well done, Mike, and the team for getting the app out, and well done for producing a great app. Indeed, indeed. And, I mean, I've only just realised it was available this morning when we spoke before we started recording, Alan, so I'm going to be playing around with it because I've definitely been waiting for that app to launch. I think it could be carbon credits is a very exciting sector uh, that's uh, really just starting to become available effectively we're literally at the cutting edge here of uh, investing in carbon credits a new asset class um you know it can almost be similar to when uh, the whole crypto thing started you know and uh, all the excitement around different things going on but this is you know these are proper projects these are carbon offsetting or carbon capture um carbon sequest i can never say that word sequestrish sequestrish Maybe you can say it for me, Alan. <laughs> but mangroves, the the mangroves that uh, that capture the carbon and 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 hold them in the in their roots. So um, I think the, the big companies are all trading these. You know, your shells, your Teslas, that kind of thing. So the fact that now your average retail investor like me and you can indeed sort of speculate on some of these new assets here. I'm really quite excited to get um, get playing with it. So um, I'm sure we're talking a lot about Aura Carbon this year because um, now that app has launched, it's really the start of, of their journey. And you already mentioned the share price growth. I mean, it's done already very, very well just since they IPO'd. So it is only just yeah. the start of, of what's to come, I think, with these guys. So, yeah, hopefully an exciting year for, for Aura as well as some of the other ones we've talked about there. As we alluded to at the start, hopefully a bit of a better year than 2023 in the markets in general. But thank you very much, Alan, for that today. That's three companies we've covered. Normally it's a couple. So thank you for your time this morning. And we'll speak again in a week's time. Thanks, Mark. Speak next week. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter. And hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching.